talking about uh, cluster A disorders, uh, where we had already talked about uh, paranoid personality disorder as well as uh, schizoid personality disorder. Personality disorder in cluster A is schizotypical personality disorder, uh, where once again you know uh, you would realize that uh, there are basically a you know, whole set of uh, inappropriate behavior, behavior that are inconsistent with uh, the subcultural norms. Okay. At the same time, the major part that you see here is uh, the eccentricity of behavior, uh, the fact that uh, no one has uh, you know, great degree of deficit in terms of maintaining interpersonal relationships. Okay. The whole of uh, you know, the affective response gets adversely affected. The another uh, cluster of uh, personality disorder is uh, you know, named as cluster B personality disorders. Okay. And uh, here are uh, know, some of those uh, personality disorders, uh, where uh, know, you would find that uh, uh, many a times a good number of uh, people do involve in uh, such type of activities. Okay. And we consider that to be uh, know, a behavior which shows inability to uh, know abide by the law of the land. Okay. Here you get a different perspective that there could be a possibility that such behavior actually reflects one or the other type of anomaly. Okay. So, we first come to antisocial personality disorder. Okay. This is a disorder where you find a pervasive pattern of disregard for, for and violation of the rights of others. Okay, which starts usually at the age of, of 15 or so. Okay. And then there are 7 prominent symptoms, minimum of 3 of these 7 should be present for an individual to be classified as somebody suffering from antisocial personality. Okay. Remember that there has to be a pervasive pattern of violating the rights of others. Now, Nowadays, you know, we find too much of a reference to human rights, rights of children, right of women, right of minorities, okay. uh, rights of a whole uh, you know, subset of the population is being talked about. And therefore, one needs to be very cautious about interpreting these uh, norms. Okay. When you try to find out that whether it is a violation from a legal viewpoint or is it a violation that is a reflection of uh, psychological problem, a behavioral disorder. The major uh, symptoms includes failure to conform to social norms with respect to lawful behavior as indicated by repeatedly performing acts that are grounded for arrests. Okay. Now, actually you know you uh, keep on repeating a pattern of behavior where the law of the land is being violated okay. and the law enforcement agencies can hold you responsible for. Uh, violating uh, the code of conduct from the legal viewpoint and you could be arrested, you could be sent to prison. Two, deceitfulness as indicated by repeated lying, using of aliases or conning others for personal profits or pleasure. Okay. So, by default you have an inbuilt uh, you know, tendency of being deceitful. Okay. You keep on lying, you keep on cheating and you derive pleasure out of doing that. Okay. Uh, remember one thing, no lying you would find as a normative uh, no, uh, principle in the culture, where by and large people suggest that no you should be truthful. Okay. From our uh, cultural context, uh, if you see, uh, no there is a Sanskrit sloka which says no that satyam buryat priyam buryat, no, but this means that you can speak the truth, but only pleasant truth has to be shared. No and the unpleasant truth uh, need not be openly shared. That is what uh, our uh, cultural norm says. Okay. And therefore, drawing the line becomes important. Remember that these are uh, the APA guidelines, the guideline that has come from the American Psychiatric Association. And therefore, uh, in most of the cases it would say that no, it should uh, no actually be violating the 
cultural norms, subcultural norms, okay. What those cultural norms are, what those sub, uh, subcultural aspects are, that needs to be taken care by the local people who belong to the culture concerned from where you have the practitioner, the clinician as well as the uh, client coming from. Okay. Then impulsivity or failure to plan ahead, a tendency to act in an impulsive order, difficulty in terms of uh, uh, planning things beforehand, irritability and aggressiveness okay, which basically leads to you know, uh, frequent fights, physical assaults. Reckless disregard for safety of self and others. So, when you engage in such type of uh, aggressive acts, okay, when you get engaged in act of irritability, you do not think in terms of how much harm it inflicts on you or how much harm you are causing to the other person. Okay. Consistent irresponsibility, okay, which basically shows no great degree of failure in terms of uh, honoring certain uh, type of behavior that is an obligations that is expected from you including financial obligations. Okay. Lack of remorse, so you do not repent for uh, something bad that you have done. Okay. Lack of remorse as indicated by being indifferent to or rationalizing having hurt, mistreated or stolen from others. Okay. So, out of these seven minimum three has to be present for an individual to be classified as somebody who suffers from antisocial personality. Okay. The other thing that although you know you find that this pervasive patterns although the onset is since 15 years, the individual is supposed to be at least 18 years of age okay. uh, and that is the reason uh, why you have uh, the juvenile uh, court of justice and the court of justice which actually runs trial for adults. Okay. Uh, there are reasons, we are not going into the details of it, uh, there are reasons uh, to suggest that uh, the brain of a human being till the age of 18 is still uh, you know, uh, prone to training and therefore, such people should not be given harsh punishments. There could be a possibility of molding their behavior and therefore, the court, court of law makes a distinction between uh, juveniles and adult criminals. And there is an evidence of conduct disorder with onset before the age of 15 years. So, basically although from legally you uh, legal view point you try to see that the offence should be committed by somebody after the age of 18, but you do try to trace it back if you are trying to uh, know, uh, assess the individual from a clinical view point that whether the onset was before this age or not. Then comes another uh, cluster B personality disorder that is borderline personality disorder. Okay. Uh, borderline cases we had talked about right from the beginning, no? you remember when we were looking at the whole uh, set of uh, behavior that could be possible uh, by uh, somebody who is not able to uh, know, reproduce an offspring, you remember that example that we took right in the beginning of the semester. Okay. There also we had that uh, know, normal set of reactions, pathological set of reactions and in between we had the borderline cases. Okay. So, here we have the borderline personality disorder which basically is reflected in terms of a pervasive pattern of instability of interpersonal relationship. So, the interpersonal relationship that you initiate okay, you have great difficulty in terms of maintaining it. Okay. Inability uh, of self image affect and marked impulsivity uh, which begins in the early adulthood okay, and present in a variety of context and once again out of these 9 situations minimum of uh, four, uh, minimum of 5 should be present in the individual. What? Uh, frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment, a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by altering between extremes of idealization and devaluation. Okay, uh, marked and persistent and stable sense of self. Okay, so, even you have not only problem with maintaining relationship with others, you have great degree of inability even in terms of uh, that the image that you derive out of your own self. Okay. Recurrent suicidal behavior, gesture or threat or 
self mutilating behavior self mutilating behavior we had discussed no uh, using the cigarette bud uh, making making a cut on your own body and stuffs like this affective instability due to marked reactivity of mood chronic feeling of emptiness okay inappropriate intense anger or difficulty controlling your own anger okay and transient stress related paranoid ideation so basically out of these nine uh, different types of uh, intense symptoms uh, minimum of five has to be present for somebody to be uh, classified as borderline personality disorder the next one is the histrionic personality disorder okay once again this has to do with uh, uh, excessive emotionality more of attention seeking behavior okay again begins in the early adulthood and out of the eight minimum of five should be present okay we will just quickly browse through it uh, that one has you uh, know discomfort in situations in which he or she is not the center of attention okay so you always feel comfortable only when you are at the center of attention okay two interaction with others is often characterized by inappropriate sexually seductive or provocative behavior you display a rapid shifting and shallow expression of emotion consistently using a physical appearance to draw attention to self okay has a style of speech that is excessively impressionistic expression of emotion no? so more and more of uh, emotionally laden uh, expression shows self dramatization theatrically and exaggerated expression of emotion no so usually people uh, in your culture do not express the feelings the way you do okay uh, highly suggestible means you are far more uh, gullible uh, in terms of your uh, what you call uh, inclination towards following the suggestions given by others okay and considers relationships to be more intimate than they actually are okay so when you consider that x is extremely uh, intimate to you uh, it's all error of judgment okay x might not be uh, that intimate uh, but you always make that error in terms of evaluating the intimacy of the relationship now we come to <coughs> a very different type of uh, personality disorder what is called as a narcissistic personality disorder okay uh, narcissism is basically a uh, a word used to define personality characteristics which reflects love for the self okay and uh, there are beautiful books rather you no know, on uh, narcissistic behavior but uh, i would suggest you shouldn't read uh, those books you no know, because it can entirely you know um, shift you from the normal trend of life that you are leading you no know, because you start questioning most of the things in life okay and when i say most i actually mean everything in life it's very difficult to digest such type of interpretations uh, but you would find beautiful books in psychology on uh, narcissistic behavior okay which basically endorses that you love yourself and only yourself For rest all is fabricated okay so you don't love your parents you don't love your children you don't love your spouse you don't love your friends your love is actually for your own self this is what the narcissistic view point is we are not going to that view point we are coming to the narcissistic personality disorder where one shows pervasive pattern of grandiose okay so no i am great that pattern of grandiosity either in fantasy or in behavior okay need for admiration lack of empathy okay again it will begin in the early adulthood okay present in a variety of context out of the nine symptoms uh, written here okay five or more should be present for somebody to be classified as having narcissistic personality disorder one has a grandiose self of, a sense of self importance why does the world exist because i am right now here why does iit exist because i have taken admission here Okay, why does this uh, class exist? Because I have registered for the course. So, grandiose, where everything is dedicated to the self. Okay, two, 
preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, ideal love. So, all, all, all things in the most exaggerated fashion. Okay. Three, belief that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with others special or high status people or institutions. So, you have great degree of problem relating to others, why? Because I do not consider the world to be of my standard, people to be of my standard okay. and therefore, uh, you consider that you are so special that unless and until you find somebody very, very you know uh, equivalent to you either in terms of individual or in, in terms of uh, collective status as an institution or as a different body you do not feel a relating with that individual or institution. Three, requires excessive admiration. No? I remember one thing that admiration is something that all of us like. Okay. It boosts your ego. Okay. It acts as a great facilitator for your behavior, but then here the degree of requirement is very high. Has a sense of entitlement, which is no unreasonable expectation of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with his or her expectation. Okay. So, you feel that I am entitled to this okay, and I should be given this privilege. It is interpersonally exploitative. So, in the interpersonal relationship you try to exploit your partner, take advantage of others to achieve one's own end, one's own goal, lacks empathy. Okay which also includes that you are, you do not show willingness to accept the feelings of others, is often envious of others. So, you envy others or believes that others are you know, having some degree of animosity for you, shows arrogant okay, behavior, your entire attitude is no full of such type of arrogance. So, out of these nine, five or more if somebody has it leads to narcissistic personality disorder. So, basically uh, what you get a feel here is that you consider yourself and only yourself nobody else, whether it is in terms of uh, maintaining a relationship, whether it is in terms of uh, <coughs> developing a certain emotionally laden uh, behavior, whether it is in terms of uh, uh, achievement, whether it is in terms of uh, the admiration that you receive, everything, everything, everything has to be self centered. Then we come to uh, avoidant personality behavior, and you can recollect that we had talked about uh, avoidance, compromise, okay, and withdrawal as pattern of uh, adjustment. Okay. At that time, uh, we did talk about avoidance as a healthy pattern of adjustment. Okay. We just ended uh, know, uh, at that time uh, with uh, the statement that excessive usage of avoidance as a module of adjustment could be detrimental and now we come to that point where okay, you realize that the whole uh, know, dominance of avoidance as a tendency within the individual could actually be a reflection of avoidant personality disorder which is basically reflected in terms of the pervasive pattern of social inhibition, feeling of inadequacy, okay, hypersensitivity to negative evaluation, uh, beginning uh, this which of course, begins in early adulthood and out of these seven minimum of four has to be present for uh, somebody to be diagnosed with avoidant personality disorder, which basically includes avoidance of occupational activities that involve significant interpersonal contact because of fear of criticism, disapproval or rejection. So, when you realize that your occupational engagement uh, requires you to be uh, know, uh, to remain connected with some other individual or individuals for little longer, okay, you try to avoid it, because you are scared of the fact that the moment you become much closer to somebody, you could be a subject of criticism, okay. you could be disapproved, you could be rejected. Two is unwilling to get involved with people unless the one is certain that I would certainly be liked by that individual. Okay. 
remember that in uh, human relationship you cannot ensure okay somebody you like today you might uh, develop dislike for that individual tomorrow somebody whom you dislike uh, today you might develop liking for that individual tomorrow okay so it's not that is it's not that our likes and dislikes are that stable in life okay and therefore if you ensure that unless and until i am guaranteed that i would be liked then only i'll uh, know uh, go for uh, getting much more closure to you then it is a trap three shows restraint within intimate relationship because of the fear of being shamed or ridiculed so even in intimate relationships you are extremely scared about the criticism and the negative evaluation four is preoccupied with being criticized or rejected in social situations and that could be reflected in behavior like say you uh, deliberately try to avoid situations say like you are invited for a party and you deliberately try to find a reason because of which you can avoid attending the party the reason being uh, that you realize that in social situations you could be a misfit you could be a subject of criticism even if you are not being a subject of criticism okay people will will constantly you know or group of people will look at you and they will keep evaluating you and this evaluation according to you could be negative in nature is inhibited in uh, new interpersonal situations because of feeling of inadequacy views self as socially inept personally unappealing or inferior to others and the last one uh, unusually reluctant to take personal risk or to engage in new activities because you realize okay that they may prove embarrassing for you okay so all you ensure is that unless acceptance unless appreciation okay unless success is ensured i will not move ahead okay in life nobody can guarantee these three things to anybody okay and therefore this would ensure that most of the situations in life you would try to avoid okay and therefore it is classified as a personality disorder this is an interesting type of personality disorder cluster b personality disorder which usually we do not think about okay dependent personality disorder which basically is a pervasive and excessive need to be taken care of so you now uh, start thinking that other should take care of you which leads to submissive and clinging behavior and fear of separation okay so you tend to cling to uh, others so that uh, no you are not separated by people who will ensure that you are uh, taken care of by them okay you remember uh, such type of behavior we had referred to when we were talking about neurotic nucleus and neurotic paradox okay now out of these eight five of uh, these should certainly be present for somebody to be classified as dependent personality disorder this includes difficulty making everyday decision with an excessive amount of advice and reassurance from others okay so all you uh, want is that others should certainly advise you they should reassure ki come on come on do it this can be done okay unless that happens in your everyday life you do not move a step ahead okay you depend on others for suggestions for approval two needs others to assume responsibility for most major areas of his or her life so you do not want to own responsibility remember for most of the things in life responsibility lies on the individual concern okay you cannot say that say uh, because my parents had uh, you know uh, arranged a marriage for me and therefore failure in relationship with the spouse is dedicated to the parents because they couldn't find a good match for me that you cannot say you do not have the privilege of saying so okay similarly you cannot you cannot say that fine i landed up in a bad institution and therefore i got bad grades you do not have that liberty okay and therefore if you start you know uh, uh, not showing the fact that others need to assume responsibility for uh, you know the type of uh, things that are important for you in life that doesn't happen okay and therefore it becomes a disorder 
if you start uh, you know assuming responsibility for all success and failures fine it's normal trend of behavior three has difficulty expressing disagreement with others because of fear of loss of or uh, loss of support or approval has difficulty initiating projects or doing things on one uh, on one's own goes to excessive length to obtain nurturance and support from others okay feels uncomfortable or helpless when alone okay because again there is a fear of getting separated urgently seeks another relationship as a source of care and support when the close relationship ends so one relationship ends and you want to have a close relationship with others because you have that dependent uh, personality disorder is unrealistically preoccupied with fear of being uh, left to take care of himself or herself no primarily this is guided by the fact that if there aren't people around you to take care of you you won't be able to survive because you are incapable of handling uh, the worldly requirements okay and therefore this excessive degree of uh, you no know, dependence on others the tendency to of showing this clinging behavior to remain intimately uh, closely associated with others right for everyday activities to major things in life okay therefore it is classified as a disorder and named as dependent personality disorder obsession compulsion we have talked about okay we won't go into the details of it but what is important for us now is uh, to look at the fact uh, that when right in the beginning when we were talking about the dimensions of subjective adjustment we did talk about the extremes of behavior okay for example if you remember with respect to uh, selective awareness okay rigid and stimulus bound awareness was one end okay and fantasy and emotion laden behavior was the other end now although these are two ends okay you need to think things from two view points one is it uh, no uh, spectrum a band where you say that this is okay a rigid awareness and here it is completely fantasy and emotionally laden thing okay is it that the spectrum no lies in this fashion or in certain cases is it that you know this is not actually a band but it is actually a circular trajectory where okay one step on this side or that side suddenly makes you do something else and second important thing that although we are talking about fantasy and emotion laden behavior and extreme rigidity in behavior where you are hooked to stimulus okay now where do we draw the line that find emotion orientation fantasy to this level is normal beyond that you cross the line you come to the last module where we have talked about all these details of the pathological uh, behavior okay remember we have taken a very small subset all we discussed during this course was uh, uh, impulse control disorder during aggression and then uh, during our discussion uh, on on uh, psychological disorders we have only taken adjustment and personality disorders but otherwise a whole range of uh, disorders like similarly you know when we talked about uh, indiscriminate acceptance of the self okay and the tendency of extreme rejection okay now when you talk of indiscriminate acceptance right now we talked about dependent personality behavior when we talked about extreme rejection okay you remember we did refer to the fact that you consider uh, that fine unless somebody is of your status you don't feel uh, developing a relationship okay now these are the extremes of normal behavior but the moment you make it little more intense it becomes a personality disorder okay similarly you no know, rigid conformity and the tendency of compulsive behavior okay when you become extremely closed system you do not allow anybody else to uh, uh, prick into your life to a point when you are extremely unstable okay where you have extreme construction of behavior and you have uh, no satisfaction with minimal achievement in life okay to 
when you have a tendency of showing behavioral impulse control okay where you show compulsive expression of your feelings now now you can uh, make out that how closely uh, these normal patterns of adjustment are to psychological disorders okay something which is otherwise normal you start moving on the spectrum come to a point where it starts bending heavily towards one side okay and you go one step ahead and you realize that the behavior is no more normal from a clinical perspective okay so this is all uh, that uh, we wanted to discuss here as a part of uh, you know our discussion on uh, you know right from the first part where the focus was exclusively on extremes of normal behavior which makes you adjusted to extreme of behavior which uh no determines clinically that you are suffering from one or the other type of pathology okay it is important for individuals to be aware of one's own behavior to be much more reflective in nature to be critically evaluating where do i stand once i know that this could be the possible range fine so that was all about that we had to discuss we'll end here